welcome to another episode of Great People TV with me, Ben Ibrahim. Hope you're well and safe. And today the topic is let's all huddle because we're talking to the CEO and co-founder of Air Up There Technologies, which is the owner of Huddle. And Huddle is a sports content creator and a sports app that connects athletes and people. And as I said in the summary of this topic is that we in Asia, we're so fussed about the best place to eat, the cheapest place to eat. Everything's about food, 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 food. But things should be also about sports, exercise, and fun. And that's what makes it a balanced lifestyle. So we're going to talk about how Huddle can help create the sports ecosystem in Asia, in Malaysia, that many of us dream about, because that will help to, well, Malaysians performing really well at the highest level and also a healthy Malaysia, a healthy Asia. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mr. Andre Kushari, the CEO and co-founder of Air Air up there technologies swallowed my air there literally and he's also known as dre dre welcome to great Bull tv hey ben thanks for having me no so uh, you are wearing your heart well your heart on your sleeve right there huddle not the other heart mate i know you got two hearts <laughs> because uh one heart for human one heart for passion of sport but let's let's just get straight into it dre tell us about this magical company the shirt huddle all right so um Huddles actually uh, started off as a passion product uh, project. Uh, three basketball teammates who I've known for close to 20 years came together and we said, you know, we want to make a change in sports. We had we had traveled the globe, we had played in different places, gone to school in different places, and we knew that sports could be so much better in Malaysia. And we saw that there was a need to create something. So that's why we came up with Huddle. It started off as a sports marketplace, getting all of these sports together so that the organizers could essentially market to the community. Um, of course, we've had to add some pivots since then, thanks, of course, to COVID, who hasn't had to adjust, obviously. Um, but, and, you know, we've just been moving from strength to strength since then. So that, that's really, really cool what you've tried to start up because starting a sports business in Malaysia or in Asia, for that matter, is not easy because, like I said earlier on, on top of the show, sports is usually not in the priority list of life but huddle is trying to change that and one thing that huddle has done really really well you've got you guys have had some investment injected into the company which is well done by the way well done that's the hardest thing to do to appreciate find investment to get that injection especially in the sports business but tell us about that and tell us about the journey of what that investment intends to bring sure so uh, about uh, like i said before covid hit us pretty hard we had lost a quite a number of our client base because of the fact that sports businesses couldn't function during during COVID uh, pandemic, right, with the lockdowns going on. So we, we decided to pivot and we thought that there would be a prime opportunity to move into our second phase of our project, which is going to be a sports OTT, basically being able to live stream any sports event that plays out of any of these amateur venues that we wanted to be able to onboard. So we approached a number of investors. We came uh, to uh, we, we spoke to Dato Adilian Anwar, who gave a one million investment in Huddle to be able to if one million ringgit, one million ringgit. Thank you. Well done. Anyway. Uh, to, yeah. Uh, to to be able to to uh, try and grow this OTT. An OTT stands for over the top. Essentially, being able to live stream uh, games from around Malaysia. So we invested in uh, AI cameras. AI cameras connected to our software. So an AI camera, to put it simply, is the ability to broadcast any sport without the need for human intervention. AI controls the entirety of it, right? We, we from the point that the ball tips off or kicks off to the point that the game, goals are scored, points are scored, the AI will move the camera view to be able to follow just like a broadcast. So it really gives leagues that can't afford traditional broadcasts the ability to live stream immediately. Now, it's really great that what you've done there because you're giving access to the consumer. And in COVID times, it's really, really difficult because even though things are safer out there, consumers are still a little bit afraid to leave home. But bigger picture, Dre, how will this God willing, because you know I'm a sports person too, how will this God willing change the ecosystem in Malaysia and in Southeast Asia? Let's not talk about Asia, that's in Southeast Asia because as we always say, the challenge with sports in our part of the world is it's still an amateur ecosystem. Yeah, exactly. And and that's why we felt that broadcast was the way to go first, because 99% of all sports events 
aren't being broadcasted. You understand that the ones that can only afford broadcast from your experience are going to be the professional leagues. They're the only ones who can afford broadcast. In this case, by democratizing the broadcasting uh, ability to be able to give the lower leagues abilities to be able to broadcast as well at literally no cost. That's our model right now. We are putting this out with no cost, getting these leagues on board because we feel that being able to get them onto the platform and leveraging on the multiple eyeballs and the network effect of having all of these smaller leagues on board allows us to be able to monetize that and to be able to pass on that revenue stream that they these leagues would not have been able to get and pass it down to them. So suddenly they're suddenly getting a part of that broadcast pie when they couldn't get that before. And Dre, tell us about the wins. No pun intended, but you know, sports is about wins. But tell us about the win. Two types of wins that I'm uh, after. Number one, the wins of partnerships that people that you signed up with that you can tell us about. And number two, the the wins that you know you're achieving. You know, maybe with the smaller leagues and everything like that. And it's really given sure. everybody sure. confidence for growth for consumption of sports. Right. So w- one of our visions and one of our uh, mission statements for for uh, Huddle in particular is to be able to create the digital athlete. Essentially, when we talk about athletes right now, there is no digital record of who I am, what position, what uh, competitions I played in, what were my stats, where did I play uh, across the years? Imagine if you were uh, 15 again and playing in all these uh, lower level competitions and by the time you're 22, 23, if you were on Huddle, you would have all of that information, your videos, your access to your stats, to be able to go to the national team coaches and say, hey, you know, I am a candidate. And I think that is something that we're already seeing impacting on the lower leagues. These lower leagues now that have come through, and when I say lower, I don't mean that they're worse or anything like that. They're just not on the radar of anybody in the hierarchy of national sports, right? Visibility. They are amateur- visibility visibility is wise. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, visibility wise. Exactly. They are uh, amateur leagues, they're grassroots leagues, but they're the largest leagues. We just onboarded a 105 team league that plays across six months and 500 games and they've got so many players who have never experienced live stream never experienced stats they're coming down and looking at their own stats hoping that they scored more than they actually did or maybe you know <laughs> it, i may not have scored but i grabbed a bunch of rebounds or i contributed in other areas of the game and to for them to be able to see that for the first time to me that's a huge win we're giving grassroots players access to things because you and I know that in order for sports to to grow from a grassroots level, there needs to be data, right? We believe in data. The digital athlete is essentially data. How are we making decisions based on data? Or who am I as an athlete digitally, right? So the data is important. The stats are there. That's, that's one of those wins that I see that these players are suddenly so excited to see themselves digitally. Number two, from a partnership standpoint, I think we've done a really good job of trying to sell this vision right they're they're a little bit uh, the, the the larger the larger associations that we've worked with so far is like for the malaysian basketball association that we're both you and i are very familiar with maba right they're, they've already asked us to help them out with their um maba cup broadcast it's happening in pulapina right uh in a week and a half actually uh <laughs> and and uh we've also uh, started working with the liga m3 which is the third division of FAM's uh, football leagues, right? So the no, third division, no. and yeah, and and they've been doing. I mean, it's still early days. I'm excited. I don't want to, uh, you know, kind of go too long on this, but it's something that it's great to see these larger organizations and the smaller organizations both adopt Huddle and be really keen on what we're trying to do because that is the only way this is going to work, right? We're getting if we get all the stakeholders on the platform from the grassroots, from the larger associations, having them believe in the need for number one a digital athlete, the data, the stats, the videos. So next time, if uh, the national team coach says, who is the best three-point shooter in the nation, he will have that information on hand. He doesn't have to wait to ask this coach or that coach. He can just pull up huddle and look at the stats and say, that's okay, you know, one touch. this guy is the yeah. one that's going to yeah. have that. Right. Dre, two more questions because we're keeping this interview nice, tight, and inspirational, which, is had, which it has been, you know, a nice huddle uh, team talk right there. No pun intended, but a question that I want to ask is that let's put our advertising hats on. If I'm, you know, no disrespect, a lot of brand managers, a lot of advertisers, they they haven't experienced sport 
compared to other markets or how we, we would like them to experience. So in, in two sentences, what's your unique selling point in terms of how Huddle can help grow brands? Sure. So from an advertising standpoint, what is your main, uh, main decision-making point? It's going to be data, eyeballs. they be able to quantify who is interested in this sport. Right now, you and I know that data does not exist in any great capacity across right. the nation, <laughs> right? We can't quantify that. And not just that, if they were able to quantify that, they'd be able to only quantify that on the pro level because that's the only thing that's being broadcast right now. So now we're able to quantify that across all of the grassroots uh, grassroots organizations. And that is, I think, going to be the biggest selling point. That and uniquely, the online to offline factor. Because now when, I, when you say, okay, I want to sponsor this league here, you're going to have that sponsorship online as well as I can go to talk to the league's uh, owners and say, hey, they want to have branding on site. They want to have activation booths on site. Suddenly, it's a nice little tightly uh, crafted ecosystem where a brand, a brand or an advertiser gets everything along that span. Nice, nice, right? Look, fantastic stuff, my friend. You sound like you're on the right trajectory. Where can consumers, potential sports fans, moms, I always say let's convince the moms to convince the children 100%. to play sport. Where can they find more information about Huddle? Sure. You head over to uh, www.huddlehuddle.com, right? That's our main website. Or you can go to the Google or uh, iOS app store and look for Huddle World. We're right there as well. You can download the app. You can talk. You can watch all those games. You can participate in competitions, book venues, the whole nine yards, all on Huddle. Very, very nice, Ray. Everyone, we've been with Andre Kushari, the CEO and co-founder of Air Up There Technologies, the founder and owner of Huddle. And like they say in sports, it doesn't start on the, the success and the fun of this doesn't start on the field. It doesn't start in the locker room. It starts in a huddle. So let Huddle be the way forward to grow sports, not just in Malaysia, but in Southeast Asia and Asia. Dre, thank you so much for joining us. All the best thank with you, Huddle. Man. And let us know if you ever need a cool, sporty voice to help the huddle conversation to come. Definitely, on. definitely. <laughs> Selling myself there a bit. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, man. Thank you. Wow. Nice and tight today, everyone. Huddle, go to the huddle website, find out more information. And to all moms out there, please go and find out more information about huddle because it will help your children have fun in sports. My name is Ben Ibrahim. Thanks for watching another episode of Great People TV. We'll catch you next week, either on a Wednesday or Thursday. Surprise, surprise, 9.30 p.m. on Great People TV.